Hello, it's Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break. And we are going to look at using the volume measure and volume builder with the Cinema 4D emitter to create some interesting results. It's just a different way to think about how to use the emitter. We're going to be looking at how we made this and maybe experiment a little bit more at the end and see how else we can push this. But this is quite cool. I do think Cinema 4D's dynamics simulation is a little bit outdated, but it's good to always try and push things and to see what we can do with the tools that we have at our disposal. OK, let's get this tutorial started. Just to be aware, I am using Cinema 4D R23. There has been quite a few updates to Cinema of late, so be aware of this if you come across any discrepancies. So the first thing we want to do is go to Simulate, down to Particles Emitter. Then we want to add a sphere to our scene, bring this sphere down to about 15 centimetres. The next thing we want to do is add a cloner, put our sphere under our cloner and then change the mode of our cloner to object and make the emitter the object. Perfect. Our spheres are emitting. Change the timeline. Just give us some more time to play with in this. And then the next thing we want to do is add a builder, put our cloner under a builder and then we get our voxels and put our builder under our mesher. Cool. Now our spheres are attaching to one another as they come out of the mirror. Brilliant. Um, next thing we want to do is bring the voxel size down to five. But as you change some parameters like speed, which we're going to do now to 50 and bring the stop emissions up to 200, 250. As you can see, there's a little bit of, you know, the voxels aren't fully attaching to each other and it's looking for the sphere within this volume builder to attach to. That is fine. We can play around with that later. But for now, we want to start seeing how we can push this. And we go into our cloner uh, make sure you have a vector selected. Go down to MoGraph, do MoGraph and add a random effector. So let's see what happens with this random effector. Not much. So if we were to change these parameters, maybe change this to 500, you can see it spreads. It almost changes where the particles are emitting from. We want to add this later to have more control. So we need to add a field. First, we'll start with a linear field because this step is perfect for what we want when we are using the spherical one in a minute. Start rotating and hold shift to rotate in five degree segments and rotate it to 90 degrees. And you can see what is happening here. This is affecting the particles within this point of the emitter. So what is the next thing we want to do? We want to go to our fall off and add normal. And then we want to change our linear field to a spherical one. And you can see we're getting a really nice fall off here. Kind of come back in. It's a bit clunky, but you know, we can work with it. Maybe change that to a curve. So I come in nicer. Uh, press T to scale and scale up your spherical field. Okay, let's make this more interesting. Go into your random effector, go to your parameters. Let's change our Y parameter to 250. That means when the spheres hit this spherical field, they can move on the Y axis up to 250 centimeters. And you could do this with Z and X. So let's see what happens here. That's quite cool with how it's working. Let's change our scale uh, to two and see what happens there. And what is cool about this is when they come back outside the field, they reattach. Let's bring this to one. And let's maybe change the size of our spheres 
Cool, and there is a kind of a setup to get started with, but let's see what else we can do to this. Okay, let's start off by simply changing the amount of spheres that this emitter is birthing. And this is going to look more interesting uh, for the sake of time. Let's move our sphere down the pipe a little. Cool, so we're getting this nice scaling effect. Okay, what else can we do? Maybe let's bring change the size of emitter to let's see if that does anything to this. And it does. And so that is quite cool because what's happening here is we are bringing down the size of our emitter and that is smashing all the spheres together to create this stream of whatever you want to call it but then once it gets to this field it breaks up but it comes back together um, which could be quite a cool effect if it's something you want to try so even something as simple as changing the parameters around this could add something interesting let's give that a bit more variety okay another thing we could do is we could add to our emitter some dynamics potentially, or not dynamics, forces. Let's add turbulence and see what happens. Make sure you include. Okay, so already, this is quite cool. We are getting the spheres moving amongst one another within our emitter because of turbulence. And they start to break apart now when they get here because obviously the position have been changed. So that is very cool. So once they get beyond this, they break away and you, they even break away using the voxels. So they kind of separate and detach almost like they're attached by liquid. Similar to the meta ball, but just pl press play and it happens. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and um, definitely worth playing around with this technique. I'm sure there's much more that can be done with this um, it can, you know, there's much more polish that could be done with it, but it's definitely a way of thinking um, of using the emitter in just a little bit of a different way, because I suppose, you know, if you don't have a particles plug in for Cinema 4D, it can be a bit tricky making things that look a little bit liquidy or have you know, a different type of form in Cinema 4D. Um, I hope you found this interesting. It's There's definitely loads to play with in this. Please like, subscribe, all those good things. Uh, we hit 500 subscribers the other day. Thank you everyone for subscribing um, and commenting and taking the time to engage. Much appreciated. There'll be loads more to come soon. Thank you and goodbye.